Hi, I'm G, and in this video I'll be showing you how I painted a begonia flower using Winsor & Newton watercolour markers. And the first thing that I did was draw it out on watercolour paper, and I've done a video tutorial for this, so if you haven't seen that yet, then I'll post the links for that below. And if you're going to do something like this, then this is what you will need. A reference photo, your picture penciled out, the watercolour markers, and a good brush. And the first thing that I do is I start with a really, really small part of the picture. As usual, to build my confidence, make sure the colours are all right. And I start with cadmium yellow hue. And this is a Winsor Newton watercolour marker. So I can just put this marker straight on as though I'm just, you know, using a felt pen. Uh, and then I can add a little bit of another colour. This is cadmium orange hue. And once I've got the marker colours on the paper, I can use a wet brush to mix these two together. And that's what you can see me doing with this very, very fine brush. It's a uh, size 3 sable round. And I'm just blending the two colours together using a little bit of water. Nothing else. So that tiny small petal had given me a bit of confidence. Now I'm thinking, OK, yeah, colours look good. Lovely bright yellow. It's time to start doing one of the slightly bigger um, petals. So here you can see me laying down just some rough strokes of yellow. Not too much because um, I've got other colours to put on top and also I like to leave some of those edges paper white so that when I actually move the colours over those areas it will be paler, it'll be lighter because I'm not putting colour everywhere. So you can see me adding some cadmium orange hue and I didn't use this one yet, this is cadmium red deep hue. Um, so I'm adding a bit of this really quite sparingly because the darker colours in watercolour markers are so juicy and so colourful they can really overpower your picture. So I always use the dark colours quite sparingly. So here you can see me again just using some clean water on a size 3 brush and I'm just gently beginning to blend these colours together on the paper. Nothing major, you know, just a little bit of water on that brush and you can just like move it back and forth and the Winston Newton watercolour markers are absolutely terrific, are reacting with the water straight away and they just start to run about and you can start to blend those colours together. So you might be watching this and thinking, well, what kind of time frame? How, how quickly are you adding the water after you put the marker on? Well, my simple answer is straight away. Pretty much, as you can see me tackling this petal by petal, I put the colours onto a petal and then I'll get my brush in the water virtually straight away and get that brush onto here and start moving it around. One, because I'm a little bit impatient. Two, because I find with any watercolour markers, if you leave them on the paper long enough, they start to stain into the paper and the ability to move them around with water sort of decreases and declines. So I just find the best thing to do is whack those colours on and get the water on straight away and you can really just start moving those colours around and blending them around. So you can see a couple of um, petals that I've done so far. So I'm working on this third petal now, exactly the same amount of colours. So I'm really only using three colours to do all of the petals on this flower. Yes, I could, you know, start using a ton more, but I'm like, well, why? Keep it simple. If this red is dark enough to do the shadows that I need, and then I've got my mid color, which is the orange, and I've got my lightest color, which is the yellow, just stick with those three. There's no reason to overcomplicate for me by starting to, you know, put in browns or other colors to try and make colors darker. Just keeping it simple. So how do I know where I'm putting, you know, um, dark areas and light areas on this picture? Well, obviously, I'm using a reference photo, the, you know, a photograph that I've taken of a begonia flower. So that is a massive, massive help. But just in general with flowers, I always find that the closer the petal is to the center, um, where it's going to be in more shadow, it's going to be darker. Whereas those petals that have grown upwards and outwards and are, you know, kind of fully formed, the edges of those usually are paler. So you've already got this kind of idea that it's going to be darker towards the center of the petal and then paler towards the outside, which is sort of what you can see me doing with this one right now. Towards the center, which I'm working on right now with the red bit, it's a lot darker, but towards the very outer edges of the petal, it's generally a little bit paler. Now, that's not a hard and fast rule because obviously the light source, um, you know, the way that it's striking the flower can totally change things. And also, as I get into the petals that are the lower petals on this flower, well, they're in shadow from the petals that are sort of curving outwards and growing outwards above them. So it's, like I say, it's not a hard and fast rule. It's a general kind of rule that I sort of stick to, but um, it will change depending on, you know, quite a few other factors, which is why having a reference photo for me is an invaluable kind of resource for doing a picture like this. 
Now this bit that I'm working on here, I'm trying to blend that orange into that yellow, but it's slightly dried out already because I didn't use enough water on the yellow. But the best thing about the watercolor markers is, you know, you can reactivate them. So all I did there was get my brush, dip it in some clean water, pop it back in, and I can just gently blend that orange into yellow that I wanted to do. Um, unfortunately, that petal, I forgot to <laughs> press record, so I ended up painting it just on its own. Uh, but here you go, same kind of process that I'm doing as before. I'm putting on some loose yellow, some bits of orange and some bits of red, and then I'm beginning to activate that color with water and blend them together. What I'm trying to do slightly differently on this petal is to show some of those kind of lines and ridges in the petal uh, instead of it just being, you know, a completely kind of flat um, curved surface. You know, these petals, they grow outwards and as they sort of get, you know, fully grown, then all those creases kind of like get flattened out. But when it's just growing, when it's just coming out of the center there, it's got all these little kind of folds and creases. And I was kind of aware that I wanted to show those. So that's what I've done with the orange um, watercolor marker this time. Popped in some of that um, to try and show some of these lines and these shadow kind of, you know, little crests and troughs within the petal shape itself. And if I'm not sure that I've done it right, I get a clean brush here and I put the clean brush on and I just rub that color back and forth while it's still a little damp. And hopefully that gives me even more of a contrast between the dark and the light areas. Now this petal, at the, which is sticking out here, I just use a bit of yellow and a tiny bit of red because this one in the photo is sort of popping outwards towards us. So the top of it is actually really pale because there's a lot of light hitting it. And that was really important for the whole picture that I got this right, got it as pale as it needed to be so that it looked really, really 3D and you know stuck out amongst the surrounding petals. It was too dark. So I just go in there with a bit of tissue paper straight away and I just sort of blot it in order to try and take that color off a little bit so that when it dries, it's a lot paler. And when you're using watercolor markers, you might get a little bit worried that they're too bright and they look too bright to you. Um, well, just like normal watercolors, they look really, really bright when they are you know, wet and they're soaking and they're saturated. But as they dry out, they do get a little bit paler. I know it doesn't look like that on this one. Uh, and I've got to say that this cadmium yellow hue is just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful, bright, bright yellow. But they were way brighter when they were wet and they just sort of like gently kind of lightened up a little bit um, as they've dried out. Now what you can see me doing here is leaving some bits of the paper white, just tiny little bits, you know, and there I am just adding some little kind of like highlights with a clean brush and some clean water. What I was trying to do is, you know, when I'm trying to show those crests and troughs and those folds within the, the leaves, uh, sorry, the petals, what I decided to do was sort of, as I was moving some of the color around, what I would try and do is leave some little white kind of creases, some little white lines that were just paper white. Um, and they would act as sort of like mini highlights on some of those kind of folds that I was trying to do. And even though they're quite small, it would help to give the picture some kind of um, visual difference. Otherwise, if all I did was just paint every single petal with kind of flat color, um, they're going to look a little bit flat, even though I've got contrast, as you can see, between yellow areas and red edges and so on. Um, it was important to leave some of those tiny little white kind of um, highlights on some of those leaves as something for you to look at, something you to see in each petal and go, oh, that's a little bit different. And it's perhaps a little bit clearer on this one. As you see me blending in that shadow there and you see me work through the rest of it, you can see I've left some of those little white lines, little white highlights, again, to suggest the sort of crests and troughs of the folds on this petal. And that's what I mean. They add a little bit of visual variety in what you're seeing on the page. You're like, oh, it's a little white bit there. You know, and also it's kind of like the idea of classic watercolor, isn't it? That you're supposed to leave paper white highlights on your work. So even though I'm using watercolor markers, I'm trying to um, integrate quite a few of the sort of classic techniques that you would normally use with you know, regular watercolors with these. So you might have noticed that I'm using quite a few transitions now um, to show the, the work on the leaf progressing much more quickly. And that's just because it's pretty much the same approach now on every single leaf. Yes, I might do things slightly differently. Like on this leaf, you can see me doing that edge in orange. 
Um, but it's the same colors and the same sort of process on each leaf. All I've got to make sure is that I'm looking at the reference photo and I know, know where there are light areas and dark areas because that's the number one thing for me with this flower picture. I'm trying to give it that really strong idea of depth and I will do that through the dark areas and the light areas and the contrasts between those dark and light areas so that you hopefully look at it and you go, oh, wow, you can almost feel those petals. You can reach in and that one is closer to us and that one is further away. So it is the same process for each of the petals now and that's why I've transitioned the colors and also some of the painting effects. So you might be watching it and thinking, oh, he's got a very strange approach here. He seems to be going all over the flower, doing petals here, there, and everywhere. Why doesn't he just start on the left and paint everything from left to right? Well, I want all of these petals to have super crisp edges, really, really crisp. And if I paint a petal next to another petal while they're still wet, they're probably going to run and some of that paint is going to run together. And then I won't get those lovely crisp edges of the petals that I want. So that's the main reason why you can see me sort of doing this rather strange random jump around the page kind of effect. What I'm trying to do is make sure that each petal that I paint is not next to one that I've just painted that is probably going to be wet and would have an increased chance of running. So that's why <laughs> I have this slightly strange process. There is method in the madness, honestly, uh, and that is why. If I was looking for something that had this really classic kind of floody watercolor, everything running together a little bit type of kind of effect, then I would not worry about sort of, you know, painting uh, different petals. I would just start on one side and just paint them all and let them all run and fuzz together. But I didn't want that effect with this particular painting. But it's a totally legitimate effect if you were doing a different painting. Now this petal I'm painting had to be really, really pale because it was really catching the light. So even though I dot on my three colors to start with, once I'm blending them, I'm blending them in the kind of white paper area, first of all, with clean water. So I know that's gonna stay yellow and then I work back up towards the orange and the red. It's still not pale enough, so I go in with a dry brush while it's still wet and I pick up by putting down the brush and just sort of picking up some of that color so it gets that kind of pale edge that I really need. So that way I was working from light into the dark colors and you've probably seen me work that way quite a bit throughout the entire picture. Start in a light area and work towards back in towards a shadow area. And talking about shadow areas, here's a bit that I didn't like that kind of pale edge that it had. So I put in a little bit of orange, a little bit of red, and then just gently with the size three brush, which has got this really nice little tip to it, really fine tip, I just sort of work those colors back around so I get a nice shadow underneath that leaf instead of that weird highlight that it had. This bit didn't look as though it was dark enough, and I talked about contrasts earlier, so I go in again with orange and red, and I start blending those two together so that this petal, which is sticking out to us, has a far darker and more shadowed underneath. Now I can go back to this one, this poor little isolated petal in the middle of all the colored ones, and I put on my colors, and then I can start blending them together. Uh, and in this one, I what I chose to do was show some of the little creases as yellow creases within the petal instead of having those white creases that I'd done earlier. One thing I really enjoyed about the begonia is it had kind of a colored tinge towards the edge of the petals. And you've probably seen that uh, you know, throughout the entire painting here. I've either done the edges of the petals with a little thin line of red or orange to try and show this. Now, usually, the petals I seem to paint don't have that edge and it's very, very pale. And if you watch some of my other videos of like the rose and the uh, peony and so on, they've got very, very pale edges, almost white. I leave the edges perhaps white to suggest a contrast. With this begonia, it was totally different. And I really like the fact that I could put a little bit of color along the edges uh, and show that the edges had this kind of like dark, kind of uh, almost linear quality to them. Really enjoyed that about the begonia. So why use watercolor markers to do this instead of watercolors? I find with watercolor markers that, um, especially when I'm working small, the control that I can get from just like dabbing the colors on is terrific. Also, it's, it seems speedier because I'm not having to mix all of these colors on a palette, first of all. I'm applying the colors directly to the paper and blending them and mixing them on the paper with water, which seems also um, a lot faster. But also, the colors seem richer and more saturated as well because you're almost getting them you know, undiluted on the paper to start with. Um, so I think you get a brighter painting. So that's it pretty much finished. And there they are side by side, photo and painting. 
Let me know in the comments below what you thought, whether this was helpful to you at all. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll also post a link below to the photograph of this that I posted on my DA account. So you can download that and have a go at painting it yourself if you want to. Please don't forget to check out some of my other watercolor videos as well. I'll post some links below to classic watercolor videos and also my watercolor marker tutorials. Thanks for watching.